For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website at channelstv.com. YouTube.com forward slash channelsweb has videos of our shows. A petrol tanker today fell at the Otedala Bridge access of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway spilling its content. The accident has caused the build-up of traffic along the route after officials diverted traffic for vehicles moving out of Lagos into the inbound lanes. Officials of the fire service arrived on scene on time to prevent the highly inflammable um, content that spilled on the road from igniting. Road safety and fire officials have been working to douse the spilling petrol and move the wreckage out of the way. On June the 27th, though, last year, a petrol tanker at the same point spilled over, resulting in a massive blaze as well that burned dozens of cars, while at least 12 people lost their lives. Let's now join Linda Gigwe in our Buja studios for more on the news at 10. Linda. Hello, Gimba. Now, President Muhammadu Buhari says the decision to temporarily close the nation's land borders owing to massive smuggling is already yielding significant results for the economy. He was addressing a delegation from the Nigerian Association for the Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Federation of West African Chambers of Commerce and Industry and representatives of the organized private sector at the State House. The president explained that a non adherence to business ideals was a major reason behind the closure. He urged all stakeholders to play by the rules in trade and business activities, which is central to the nation's economic development. After many years of diplomacy and aggressive regulatory oversight which yielded few results, we decided to close our land borders for a limited time to assess the impact of this measure. Within a few short weeks, we are already seeing a decline in the volumes of counterfeit smuggled goods in some of our major markets across the country. This validates our action as a government when we insist that the African Continental Free Trade Agreement must not only promote free trade, but legal trade of quality made in Africa goods and services. A critical success factor is the adherence to law and ethics by all stakeholders. Unfortunately, in recent times, many traders simply do not play by the rules. By these selfish practices, we help keep foreign factories working while closing ours. We will continue to solicit your support, both here in Nigeria and across West Africa, to ensure that we bring an end to the dumping of substandard items in our region and on the continent. The presidency is peaking a bone with the report of a UN rapporteur on violence in Nigeria, pointing out that it has remained silent on intra-group violence. A statement from the special assistant to the president in media and publicity, Mr. Garba Shehu, says the rapporteur did not address intra-ethnic conflicts and cattle rustling as key elements in herder farmer conflicts. Mr. Shehu says in a statement that there is absolutely no doubt that violence between farmers and herders, which has a long history in our country, spiked in recent years. But the effectiveness with which the federal and state authorities responded made a big difference. He insists that in Benue, Taraba and Cross River states and many parts of the country, most of the casualty results from intra-group, inter-group and community violence. According to the presidential spokesman, if the violence and the general insecurity in Nigeria are to be addressed, incidents everywhere should be part of a narrative. He goes on to say the UN representative needs to be truthful and even-handed in her assignment. 
Now to the National Assembly, where the Speaker of the House of Representatives has threatened to report the service chiefs to the President after they failed to honour the invitation of the House leadership. According to him, the purpose of the meeting was to hear from the service chiefs the challenges posed by the Boko Haram insurgency and how the House could be of help despite the presence of the Inspector General of Police, the Director General of the Department of State Services and Comptroller General of Immigration, Mr. Bajabi Amila was visibly upset. He called off the meeting and announced a postponement to Monday the 23rd of September. I cannot understate my disappointment or our disappointment that the rest of the service chiefs are not here. Again, like I said, we call this meeting because it was invariable. I'm almost embarrassed, and to tell you the truth, I'm almost embarrassed. There was no call placed to my office to explain why. I'm just saying accountants and representatives. So, honorable colleagues, I'm, I'm not sure how to handle this, because I don't think this has happened that I know anywhere, any parliament in the world, any parliament in the world, where the head of parliament will call the service chiefs for a nagging problem, how to resolve it, and you have what you call no call, no show. I will personally see the president myself. I will, because we're supposed to work as one. Senior pastor of Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, Koza, Biodun Fatoimbu, has described the suit filed by Busola, wife of celebrity musician Timi Dakolo, as frivolous and statute barred. Fatoimbu, through his lawyer, Mr. Alex Ezion, SAN, in a preliminary objection dated 20th September 2019, said the relief sought by Mrs. Dakolo in the suit are not grantable, which makes the suit incompetent. According to the objection filed at the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Ms. Zion says the court lacks the jurisdiction to entertain the suit, arguing that the suit is frivolous and a palpable abuse of court process. He further said in the affidavit that the said purported mere allegation of rape is still a subject of investigation by the police. Mrs. Dakulu had last month approached the court to seek redress in the allegation made against Pastor Fatoimbu two months after she made a shocking revelation in an interview of how the Abuja-based cleric allegedly raped her as a teenager. Now to some company news. In a bid to bring its presence closer to its host community, NNPC and Seplat Petroleum Development Company flagged off a Medicare initiative tagged the eyes can see and safe motherhood. Hundreds of indigents of Izombe and its neighboring communities of oil-rich Oguta local government area in Imo State benefited from the joint corporate social responsibility in its third edition. The management of Seplat Petroleum Development Company says the medical program aims, is aimed at ensuring good health and well-being of the people in Oguta. In their numbers, indigents of Izombe and its neighboring communities gather at the Federal Medical Center waiting for the formal launch of the medical initiative. <laughs> the arrival of the wife of the Imo State Governor, Ibere Yedio, signals the commencement of the corporate social responsibility, a joint venture between Sepla Petroleum Development Company and the NNPC. Petroleum Development Company. In a welcome speech, the general manager for external affairs and communications, Chairman Wachuku, shed more light on the healthcare initiative. It is a known fact that blindness has significant negative impacts on families, employment, income, on education of the children within the family who are usually the caregivers of the blind relative. So during the program, we perform cataract surgeries, provide free eyeglasses, detect signs of glaucoma to reduce access to um, uh, cases of permanent loss of vision. There are plans to take the healthcare program to nine communities across 13 centers in the next three weeks. 
Mrs. Yedia says the healthcare initiative is in line with the Rebuilding More project of the government as it complements the administration's promise of a better healthcare delivery in the state. You have christened your, your program the I Can See and Save Motherhood. And I thank you because without, without our eyes and without good vision, we may not be able to achieve much. And without the safety of our mothers in the GMA, our future will be in trouble. Thank you, and I'm going to thank you very much. With little income daily, beneficiaries say the initiative is a great relief. We are very grateful and we thank God that uh, uh, this uh, medical outreach will continue going ahead. They are telling for pregnant women, people that is pregnant, the way that you manage yourself, the way that your baby will take care of yourself or your baby. And they will give us gifts, free. Since the inception of the Eyes Can See and the Save Motherhood program in 2017, record shows that over 3,000 pregnant women have benefited and more than 7,000 eye patients have been treated and given reading glasses. While over 200 surgeries have successfully been performed. Okay, all right, this way. Yes. She's coming.